Hey everyone, Jill Gavargazian here, the director and co-writer of The Stylist. I'm really excited to be putting together a list of 31 horror films to watch this October for Letterboxd. And I've gotta be honest with you, picking 31 films is really hard. I am such a huge fan of the genre that I could revise this list for the next year and it will never stop. But I decided I had to pick stuff from all different eras, going way back to the classic films, to stuff I grew up seeing, all the way to stuff that's only a couple years old, even something from this year. So I'm gonna go through just like a few of my favorites and you're gonna have to check out the rest over on Letterboxd. Let's start with The Bride of Frankenstein. That is my favorite classic monster movie. I love how it has such a huge element of tragedy in its narrative. A lot of the old monster movies to me feel more like tragedies than they, than they do horror films. And you'll see in a lot of my selections and in my work that I love combining scary and sad together. <laughs> um, the 70s might be my favorite decade for horror, to be honest. It birthed my favorite horror film of all time, The Texas Chainsaw Massacre. The Saw is family, after all. And a ton of films that I feel like influenced the rest of horror and all the filmmakers to come, like The Exorcist, the Omen, the Amityville Horror, and the granddaddy of them all this month, Halloween. Now, it's not to say I don't love the 80s, which was, you know, like the decade of slashers. I've got pieces on my list. It's exactly what you think it is. I've got um, my favorite camp slasher, The Burning, which, you know, gets less, less shine than Friday the 13th than some of the others. Um, then if we skip on up to the 90s, Candyman, one of my favorite films of all, all time. Like Bride of Frankenstein, I love its tragic element to it. I feel like Candyman is so much like a classic monster movie. His story, his background is sad and heartbreaking. And, you know, society turned him into a monster, just like the monster in Frankenstein and so on. Um, we skip to the mid-90s when Scream came out. That was like made for me and people of my age. Scream came out when I was probably like 12 or 13. I was already a horror fan, but that like turned me into a fanatic. It, I remember finding this like blog on the internet and this is before the internet was very big and it like called out every reference in Scream to older films. And I really used this as like a Bible, like I need to watch all these films and then I will be a horror expert. And you know, Scream was also the beginning of the huge like teen horror madness of the late 90s, which I was there for. I love stuff like Idle Hands is one of my favorites. It's on the list. Final Destination, big Devin Sawa fan over here. Um, Ginger Snaps, love high school horror films. Gen Jennifer's Body, coming up a little sooner, is also on my list. Um, I also have a huge thing for witch films, Satan films. A lot of times it's the same thing, like the classic The Blair Witch Project. I can still see where I was sitting in 1999 in the movie theater the first time I watched that movie. And still to this day, I think it's horrifying. Um, in that same world, I've got The Witch on my list. I've got two more recent Indonesian films, Satan's Slaves and Queen of Black Magic. Those films are really interesting to see and refreshing because they also have a lot of Indonesian folklore in their narratives. And then all the way up to this year, I've included Censor on my list, which was from writer-director Prano Bailey Bond. It started as a short film called Nasty back in 2016. Censor is about that era in England when they would call films that would be banned video nasties. Uh, even Texas Chainsaw Massacre was a video nasty. They were not allowed to release in the UK, which just made them all the more popular. And Censor is an incredible film about that. One of the best horror films I've seen in years. Um, so check it out. 